G'day, welcome back. Uh, finally back in the, in the workshop after a good solid two months and uh, a lot of kilometres. So uh, as you know, if you've been following along, we've done the, the Ship Bucks Rally. That's been done and dusted and uh, I'm back now, I'm ready to get back into the WB. So uh, let's get into it. So yeah, back into the workshop. Um, yeah, couldn't wait to get back and get get started on this thing. It looks like it hasn't changed in months, and it's probably because it hasn't. Yeah, look, you're probably getting frustrated as uh, as I am, but uh, you know, as I said, the, the rally popped up, and uh, you know, couldn't uh, not do it. So that uh, took focus and priority for a lot of a lot of months, and um, now that it's finally done, and I've recuperated and recovered. Um, I'm, I'm getting back into it. So, what are we going to do? I really want to tackle that uh, cow panel. It's been going on for a while, so I think it's time to get it on. I have um denied about, you know, taking it off uh, the roast history, putting it back on the chassis, so I can mount the guards and the bonnet and do it all, um, you know, as accurate as possible. But I think honestly, this uh, the old panel alignment holes where I've drilled it out are still there, and. You know, these things aren't Audis or Mercedes where you can roll a marble down the, the panel gaps. They, you know, they were pretty liberal with the, the, cow, um, the cow gaps between the cow panel and the doors and the, and the guards. So I reckon if I get it, as long as I keep it matched up with the old template of the old one that I've drilled out, which is, which is great because I have that as a template, um, then I'm very confident that the, uh, we're not going to have any alignment issues. So that's the way I've chosen to do it. Um, whether it bites me in the ass or not, well, I guess we'll find out, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be uh, a good way to do it and uh, it, should, it should work out fine. Yeah, so that's the plan of attack. The other side of things I'm going to uh, try and do is, um, is the underneath. So I want to, uh, at the same time I'm tackling the cow panel, I really want to try and finish the underneath because, and the inside of the cab because you, know, you want to try and get as much dusty shit work that uh, you need to do out of the way. So it doesn't land inside that cow plenum chamber and then you just have to constantly clean it out anyway. So before I really weld that in, I want to treat this underneath, uh, KBS it, KBS the, in, the inside. So I'll clean, vacuum, you know, uh, treat it and then paint the, in, the underneath, KBS the inside of the chamber, weld it on inside the cabin. That's the plan and um, yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so first things first, uh, with this underneath, I reckon uh, that's the way to go first. Um, it's always hard to know, you know, because I'm just guessing every time I start stuff like this. So, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's not rocket science. It's it's metal that needs to be cleaned and painted. So you just got to rip into it and and get it done. Um, so there's a few things that need to sort of happen before I can get in there and just knock a bit of this rust off. I might get the wire wheel out, um, and you know, I've already cleaned it with the pressure washer, as you've seen. But uh, it just needs to knock it off with a bit of wire wheel action and and um, you know maybe some um, some scotch. Uh, on the drum wheel, the Scotch Bright stuff, and um, just get all the old seam sealer off, all the flaky rust, all that kind of stuff that's going to just chip off if you uh, paint over it. Then uh, and remove the cable, the handbrake cable. Um, there is the uh, the T bar bolts here, the T bar auto, which will need to come off as well. You've got a couple of these little plugs here that would have been mounting mounting holes. Um, you can see one there as well. So you can probably take them off, or you can just literally paint in there. Um, and down the back here is just there. Uh, there is uh, fuel tank. The gold gas LPG gas tank was mounted there, so I'll take that off as well. And any loose wiring and stuff, I might just sort of yeah, cut it off or tape it around on somewhere so it doesn't get snagged. Oh yeah, and also underneath the uh, the wheel arches, I know they've got some bit of body dead to here and. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll get uh, stuck into that and remove a bit of that as well. Um, but because my option, I'm going, and I've mentioned this several times, the KBS rust seal. Um, I know you can get this rubberized uh, deadener as well, which a lot of people have been going on about, um, which is really good. Probably take a bit of sound out of the you know stones and stuff hitting that. 
you know, I don't particularly care, you know, about sound in these cars. I want it to be bloody loud anyway. So um, I'm just going to use the KBS. I've already got the, t the tin and uh, yeah, I might spray it or I might actually manually um, do it because I've used it uh, on the, the shipbox box ute with the spray gun and it applied really nicely and it gets like much quicker to do that. But it just means I have to make a little temporary booth again. And um, at this stage, I don't know if I can be bothered. So um, I might just apply it with a paintbrush, get it in there and then it's done. So uh, we'll start by uh, disassembly and we'll go from there. All right, just a quick update on this, uh, these last remaining things to get off the underneath. Uh, so this was dual fuel when I bought it. So this is the gas tank, tank bracket. <coughs> um, and they've obviously drilled two holes through the, uh, the tray to get it on. So it's got a uh, hard to get to bolt there um, on both sides, which is sort of hidden by that arch there. Um, on the other side, we've got an Allen key screw that goes into there. Um, I might give them another go, but they're pretty much seized. So in order for me to get, because I'm a one man show as well, it's hard for me to get on both sides of the tray. So anyway, I decided to cut it. And this is like five mil thick uh, steel. So you can see I've just cut the arcs there, which allowed me access. I'm not gonna use this again anyway, so it doesn't worry me. Um, yeah, this is <coughs> where this Kuiper metal X blade comes in um, really useful. So yeah, this is a five inch version and uh, it just got to, gets a little bit more reach than that little 75 mil one I've got on the air tool. And it was just, uh, just hardy enough to, uh, and it's perfect for getting some clearance into uh, just chopping these off and, uh, and getting access to those bolts. So yeah, um, I've had this on there for a while and you can see because it's brazen diamond, it uh, hasn't worn down at all and it keeps its profile. So by using a little fiber disc, your profile wears out pretty quickly trying to get through thick, thicker stuff. So, you know, you don't have the diameter to try and consistently get through it. Um, as I said, it doesn't, it's never going to cut as fine as a uh, fibre disc, but you'll get a thousand cuts out of it as compared to a few on a um, fibre disc. So money well spent um, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. So I've been testing them for a while, as you all know, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to let him go and into the market now. So if anyone wants one, um, drop us a line and uh, I'm also going to put them on a website and uh, yeah, see for yourself. All right, let's get back into it. Okay, so now that I've removed everything from underneath the car and also inside the cabin, um, it's pretty much time to start prepping the underside of the, of the ute for paint. Um, but before I go and do that, I thought I'd revisit the, the cow. So I'm going to sort of do these at the same time. Um, and I want to start checking clearances and things like that for the door. So I've got a door um, and I've just roughly picked it up at this stage and just rested it against uh, where the cowl panel bracing and things like that are. And already I can see, I remember I left a little bit of meat there on that, um, that little flap of metal there so that the cowl panel can rest on it. So I just wouldn't have it too short. So <clears throat> the door actually butts right up against that. So it's hitting it at the moment. So I need to mark it in texture where I know I need to trim so I can get in there and I'll start to finesse it. As I mentioned, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to utilize the current cow panel um, position so that I know exactly where the new one will go. Um, you can see there, I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of a, um, a zoom in. But you can see there, that, uh, at the moment it's sort of lifting up a little bit so I know that there's something hitting underneath there. But also the clearance is a bit strange here so I need to, I need to trim this bracing underneath that I'd formed up. And I, you to remember that this was so rusted that I had to go by ice. That was pretty much no templating involved. Um, so I'm just going to use this as my master template now, the, the original cow panel. I know that the bonnet line will be within one or two mil. I'm not too concerned about that. And in fact, it's impossible to really test that unless you're waiting until you put the body back on the chassis, which I don't want to do. So I want to, I want to get all this body work done <coughs> before I put it back onto the chassis. So that's why I'm doing it here. Also the front guards, probably you could probably put the guards on somehow, but um, I'm just going to, uh, to eyeball it and um, 
based on this cow panel here, it shouldn't be too bad. So I might eat my words, but look, they're exactly the same panel, so they're not going to be, the variation is, is, is not um, more than one or two mil at the most. Um, so I'm pretty confident it's going to be fine. So anyway, I'm going to start doing this and start to test fit the door. All right, so I've clamped on the old panel and I've used the, uh, the spot weld um, drill points as reference to line them up, which is actually becoming really handy. So I know, you know, we're within a millimeter. You can see that one's slightly off. There is some slight flex in this panel, but you can see these ones are, this is the fabrication stops um, the old uh, panels there and then the fa my fabrication starts here. So you can see it's a little bit off. Um, and we're coming short for this bracing here. So you can see underneath, we've just got a lip there that's poking out. So I'm going to have to uh, add a little bit of extra metal onto there just to make sure that that's completely covered so that we can uh, make sure it's as strong as possible. And you've also got these points here, which the, uh, the dash, plastic dash snaps into. So you can see, you know, I'll have a look at this point. There's a lot of flex there. So <clears throat> I would imagine that that flex was in the panel already. And so when they're installing it, obviously they want it to be tensioned as a structural panel. So they've probably, you know, they put it on and then they will pop it down and then and spot weld as they go along. Now I'm just assuming that. So, you know, I could be wrong. If anyone knows any different, please leave a comment. Um, over here, you've got the spot welds lining up beautifully. So I know based on where they're lining up that the panel was sitting where it was. Um, and so I've gone right along. And here, this is a better side. This, is, this was always a better repair anyway, based on my first learning point. Um, and this has been flexed up a little bit from when I was trying to get it off. The panel has been eaten out here but it did actually weld to this point here so you can see all these um, spot welds are actually resting back on that bottom panel um, and they're all lining up within reason to have around about a mil you can see that's a mil out there um, so it's probably flex but it's probably got something to do with the fact that this section in the middle is still poking up a little bit there so from my fabrication point here it's this one's a much better piece it's still got a bit of a gap here but i'll push that push that further up this is still going to sit back down slightly slightly so i've marked it here with texture to know where this point here because this is a real reference point for the windscreen and also the door so i want to try and line these up it is jutting out slightly but i reckon that is uh factory because the other one's jutting out around about the same distance which is around about, oh, it's about 15 mil I reckon from this point to that point so I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Um, clamped it here as well so you know I'm happy with the uh, the way they're lining up as I said this is bowed, bowed up but yeah that's not affecting it's not affecting this point it's, you know it's pretty much just staying to the top part. So just have another look at this point sticking out. So I reckon that based on the other one's more than 15 mil. In fact, I'll, I'll measure that now. So based on resting it there, you can see it's around about, about 11 mil to that point from the edge. This one does look further out, but it's, uh, I'm happy with that. It's 11 mil. So we're looking good. Admittedly, that is the old panel, but anyway. Uh, now I'm going to take this off and, and test fit the, uh, the new one, and we'll see how we go. I have the, uh, the new panel on. Um, it's a bit dirty because it's been sitting around, but uh, it's just dust. So straight away, it... Uh, once again, it's, I've said this before, but it's a, it's a bloody good fit straight off the bat. Um, it's sliding down over these, these dash holes um, and they're lining up quite nicely. And there's no real flex in the middle like the other ones. So, you know, you can see there, it's, it's, um, it's quite nice. Um, 
We're sitting a bit forward here compared to the other one, thinking that might be just the meat of the panel. It's not in reference to being too far forward because I've done some lineup shots. I took a photo of the old panel and lined it up there. And they do, this one's probably sitting a little bit further back than the other one. Yeah, this one here, once again, measured it. And <clears throat> the other one was 11 mil. This doesn't have as pointy nose as the other one. It's a bit more rounded. So it's hard to sort of pinpoint that exact point. Um, so it's, at the moment it's a bit in, it's about nine, about nine mil. Um, but then this side is sitting a bit higher. You can see the gap there. So this is obviously wrong um, compared to the other one. It's not as good, so I hammered this down before. This needs to come up a bit more and so then bring that back up to there. This one's about 11 mil, but I can, I can adjust this by back and forth. So I reckon both of them need to be around about 10 mil um, out. And then this one is sitting pretty much on the knocker um, on this side. So with that line, compared to my reference photos, it's probably still a little bit proud at the moment. But I have figured out why it's not snugging in as much as the other one. And that's this section here. See how it's got a straight line there? So that it's basically hitting here. So there. Whereas the original, is curved. I thought this might have been rust, but it's actually that's the way the panel was. So um, that allows it to tuck in more, and that's why it's got more of a point. So this is slightly more rounded, and it's a because this is a from HZ right through to WB. So there might have been slight differences, but yeah, um, I know that the WBs we're a bit of an afterthought for this panel so they don't have the even though it says hj to wb if you go on the inside it actually says that it's a uh, a 1980s you know hj to hz so the difference being as i mentioned before they don't have the the windscreen wiper holes here which are there so you just have to drill them but as far as i can see that everything else is exactly the same but this may be either one of the re one of the uh processes that they've used to actually mold this um, or it was different on the earlier cars so I'm gonna grind a bit out there just to make it a bit more curved to give it a bit more breathing space and then I reckon it'll allow this top section to come down because at the moment you know it's sitting a bit high so I reckon that's the culprit so I'm gonna do that on both sides and then we'll see how the fit goes Okay, so I have cut those um, grooves out. Now, it looks like it's way too much there. And I, I would have, I actually went a bit deep there. But you're never gonna see this anyway, so I'll just fill that in with weld. Um, it's a fair gap there though, so I think I'll probably just weld it there and just fill the rest in um, with uh, Sikaflex and stuff. But uh, I'm happy with that. I just actually held the door up and test fit it, this gap here. And I'm happy with that. So based on that, I reckon the, the guards will be fine. Um, so now I'm going to, uh, just to, just to double check, I'm actually gonna hang the both doors and um, just see if I can get them lined up both sides visually and um, be, be happy with it. Um, but yeah, the groove on this side as well is in. And once again, too much, but uh, yeah, I said you're never going to see it. And I just wanted to have enough room so I could play, play around with that. I reckon we'll hang the doors and we'll have another look at it. All right, so uh, I've hung the first door, um, passenger side door, and I've used the little winch um, that I've installed on the roof to do that. And yeah, as you can see, the panel gaps um, are pretty good. I'm happy with the, uh, the plenum based on that door there. Um, as I said before, you know, if you stick to the old uh, template, you know, you're bound to, um, it's bound to be all right because this plenum mold is pretty, like pretty much spot on. So I'm very confident the other side's gonna be all right, but just in case, I'm gonna hang the door anyway, and then just check the two. And then once I've done that, um, I'm, I physically just grabbed a guard, which I've got over there, and just held the guard up because without the chassis and the, and the radiator mount, things like that's gonna be very hard to, to put that in position so based on just generally holding it up um, there's plenty of room 
to adjust, you know, if you need to. Based on that, I'm happy and I'm going to move forward to now hanging the other door and um, let's see how that lines up as well. All right, just a uh, bit of an update on this um, driver's side door. Um, when I first tried to mount this, uh, this, these hinges on the, on the side of the um, tub, I put them on the door first and then try to raise it and put it on the, um, the tub. It doesn't work that way, so the best way to do it um, that I've discovered anyway is put these on first and then once they're in position, then raise your door up and you'll have access to actually mounting them on the door. Um, if you're lucky and you've got more than one person working with you, you can, um, you know, get them to hold the door up. But uh, yeah, otherwise, if you're a uh, one-man band like myself, just uh, you'll have to get some kind of hoist or something because these doors are pretty heavy. This one's still got the working mechanisms inside, so it's even heavier. And it's got all the bitumen tar on the inside of the door that I uh, hadn't taken off yet. So she's pretty heavy, but with this little cable, it, it um, gets up into place easily. Also, make sure when you take your handle off, um, you release the latch or take the latch mechanism off because um, I didn't do that. And it latched and gripped over that and it's impossible to actually get off once you once it's um, once it's latched because the handle's gone obviously. So I had to get inside and pull the mechanism from within the cab, which is which was a pain in the ass because the door had to be stuck there. So I had to climb in through the window. So yeah, either take that off or take out the mechanism for inside the door um, and that way you can still have this little section to, to sit the rear of the door on so that it's not sliding back down. Um, I'm just going to take this off because I don't want to take all the internals out of the door and um, I'll just, yeah, rest my hand on it while I, um, while I do the bolts up. So, uh, yeah, we'll get this done. Okay, I've hung <clears throat> the driver's side door and I'm pretty happy with the gap, so... This is the uh, driver's side gap between the cowl and the door. Um, yeah, so it's around about one centimetre, just over about 11 mil. So um, I think there's one mil difference between the gap here and the other side. Um, there is a slight different lineman here. So you can see it's sitting backwards around about, you know, almost five mil. Um, <clears throat> which worries me a little bit, so I might have to sort of suss that out. I don't know whether that was shorter than the original panel or whether it is sitting too far forward, but dependent, uh, it's all dependent on this fold here. So that pretty much dictates where the whole panel sits. And, you know, it's aligned up here beautifully and it's aligned up there beautifully. So I'm thinking that it might just be a little bit shorter. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It's a little bit of a risk because obviously the bonnet's going to be, bonnet alignment's going to dictate, um, you know, that's going to dictate how the, the bonnet aligns as well. So I'll check, double check it, but I'm pretty happy with the way that is um, hanging at the moment and sitting. So this door is reasonably uh, clean. It's better, it's better than the other one. Um, it's not jutting out like the other one and uh, it's sitting nice at the top sitting pretty flush down the bottom there where the guard will meet. So yeah, um, I've just clamped it, one on each side, one on the centre. And if we work our way back over, you'll see that the, uh, the gap's very similar. So it's slightly bit tighter on this one, like this is where the one mil is, so. Um, but look, it's, I think you're talking about a 1980s Holden here, so. But yeah, so I'm happy with that and uh, I'm going to now mark the plenum and uh, maybe even drill a couple of um, positional holes so I don't know exactly where it's going to line up in the front there and on the sides. Um, and that will mean that um, I'm not going to uh, miss that alignment once I uh, take it off. And then I'll, what I'll start doing is clean the inside of the plenum chamber now, get it all ready for uh, Sikaflex, um, so I'll clean it with the, the wire wheel or even just give it a good clean, prep it, um, give it a degrease and then start sicker flexing all those joints where I welded it and then I'll um, 
do the KBS rust seal. And then that's it, and then I'll uh, weld her on. So uh, pretty exciting, I can't wait to get this thing uh, locked on. And uh, then I can move to spinning her over and, um, and painting the under underbody and inside the cab. Update. Uh, <clears throat> after I uh, cleaned out the plenum chamber, got that ready for paint, I thought, well, I might as well get everything ready for paint at the same time, otherwise I'm just going to be creating more dust, which is going to go inside the uh, plenum chamber and, you know, become a nightmare to clean later on. So I've just jumped into the cabin first and I've pretty much why we would everything there. Um, you know, just <clears throat> the top's fine, I'll just go straight over that. I was going to leave the, uh, the seam sealer, I've taken a lot of it off. And the seam sealer, well, the Sikaflex, old Sikaflex is like a tarry, a bitumen like sealer. And uh, from first inspection, it actually looks pretty solid. So I was going to leave it. But um, I thought, well, I'll just try and, you know, pick a few areas off to see how stable it is underneath, because I don't know how they built these things, um, whether they put it on bare metal or not. So um, just bear with me, but you can sort of see, do that. I've decided that uh, based on that flakiness, um, you know, it's probably, well, yeah, 30 plus years old now. So um, everything's got its shelf life and uh, Underneath, I noticed that in certain areas there is a bit of rust behind where it was. So, you know, you can see there. The main areas um, that I've noticed are in down behind these, the chassis mounts in the rear of the tub here inside, just down here. In, in there, um, you can see right through, it's actually even got a um, protrusion there where it's rusted through. Yeah, so I've taken all that out. I've even taken all that out there um, and I've worked my way right along into the other corners there. You can see there, where it was all hunked in. Um, and in there as well, that wasn't too bad. So I think it's worth taking it off, especially along down here in the footwell. Um, back on there, you can see there's some surface rust. So, you know, if you just left it, I mean, yeah, you're sealing it in, but you're, uh, you're gonna open yourself up for potential rusting down the track. So I think it's better if you can be bothered to do it, or if you're getting a tub, this hub sandblast, it's gonna come off anyway. But I would suggest, in my experience, based on this, um, remove, this, the, uh, remove the sealant as well, and uh, just do it all again. When you do do it, don't apply the sealant to um, bare metal. I'm gonna polyurethane it first and then put the sealant over that. Um, because, yeah, I think on bare metal, it, I've read that um, it's not, uh, you can get moisture between the, the sealant and the metal, so it can cause rust. So paint it first with their epoxy. I'm gonna do the, um, the KBS, so whatever floats your boat, but um, that's, uh, that's the way I would do it. Paint it first, then seal over the top. All right, let's move forward. All right, so I'm pretty happy with uh, all the grinding and the cleaning that I've done. Now I'm just gonna make a little temporary spray booth going to run this um, plastic down and protect the, uh, the concrete. It's a sticky plastic painters, professional painters and construction uh, workers and things like that, construction sites will use it. You literally just stick it down over carpet and things like that and then you rip it up once you're done with it. So it's just a quick fix to try and protect the, uh, the concrete. All right, so we have our little rudimentary painting area. I've decided I'm going to brush it on, you know, just to get right into the nooks and crannies and that way I don't have to make this spray booth. All right, uh, if you're wondering, I'm down here because the uh, tripod broke and um, now I've only got a tiny little tripod. Uh, yeah, that's all a euphemism either. All right, so uh, I've gone over this U, wire weld it, as, a, as you know, wire weld the back, wire weld inside, underneath. Um, I haven't got all the way back, but I tell you what, you could go forever on this, but um, I've just got rid of all the flaky, bulky stuff. 
And now it's uh, time to paint, but I was just about to start that and then I started going over it and I noticed all these little pinhole areas, you know, especially around the, the plenum chamber where we, where I drilled out the, uh, the spot welds, you know, there's little areas that have gone through and things like that. So I need to fix that. Also in the, um, in the floor well, um, I need to fix that. The floor pan still got a little few little pinholes that I left from last time. So anyway, I'm going to start doing that to the plenum chamber. I'm also going to go, and I've noticed when I was wire wheeling, I've also cracked through a couple of weak areas on the back of the rear of the sill. Um, and that sill was pretty much like bloody, you know, Swiss cheese in certain areas. It's really thin. So I'm just going to repair that um, and just run my eyes over. The back of the tailgate where the gas tank is got some holes there, which will require quite a bit of welding to fix. So, so that's what I'm going to do now. I've got some new um, MIG wire and I'll um, go through and just start fixing up all those little holes. A year in the making, um, she's all done. So it'll be a dust-free workshop until I obviously put body filler on it and it starts all again. Okay, so the uh, wheel well is now fully stripped back to bare metal. Um, and now I'm just gonna go, and go around and actually panel beat these wheel guards because over the course of the, uh, the life, it's got a few dints and st stuff from throwing bricks and rocks and all that kind of thing. I'm just gonna clean it up, might as well, and uh, just get it reasonably good. And there's also two holes drilled in it from the roll bar, so I'll also weld those up. Done one wheel, one wheel well. Um, yeah, I just took all the paint off and it's not perfect, but uh, it's good enough. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, you know, once body filler and stuff's on there, it'll be really nice. This one, however, is a different story. It's got some pretty big dents in it. It's pretty fucked actually, but I'm pretty confident I'm gonna get that back. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started on this one, see if we can resurrect it. Second wheel well done, pretty happy with it. Um, that was much worse than the other one, so to bring that back to, to this uh, stage here, I'm pretty happy. I could go and uh, start heat treating it, butane torch and finessing it a little bit more. Um, but to be honest, I'm happy with that at the moment. And um, body filler will, will clean up the rest, so. So now I'm going to move on. These, these holes here, yeah. so I've got four of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six holes from the gas tank and the roll bar that was in there. All the uh, holes are now fully welded for the gas tank mounts, the roll bar mounts, all done. So I'm just gonna grind that bit off there. So now I'm gonna move on to uh, preparing the <clears throat> plenum chamber for the KBS, so I'll do that first. Here we go. Okay, the Deoxid's done. I've done some prep wash over the top of that. Same scenario as all the other stuff. Done some prep wash after deoxid to give it a thorough clean. Basically, I've decided to use KBS rust seal on the chamber and inside and underneath, which I've explained before. KBS is an Aussie product, exactly very similar to POR15, um, but some say it is slightly better. So <clears throat> I can't verify that, but I'm going to KBS because it is Aussie. Um, and I've used it as a test case. I actually sprayed the shitbox VS Commodore in the KBS product, product called Blacktop. So 
it's a black tops a chassis coder and they market it as a UV resistant um, polyurethane coat. So you are meant to rust seal with this, and then if you want it, if it's an external paint that's going to be facing the uh, the sunlight, you need to put black top over the top because that's UV resistant. Otherwise, it will fade. The polyurethanes do fade, and they're not they're susceptible to fading with UV light. So this one is still a polyurethane, but it it, um, it has a UV stability additive to it. Why they do that, I'm not too sure. Um, you'll have to check with them, but from what I can see, they're two very similar products. Coating that I put over that, uh, the ship box, uh, the VS Commodore, after 10,000 kilometers, I couldn't find one chip on it. The, the stuff is as tough as nails, so, um, and I sprayed it with a gun, and um, hardly any overspray, it's quite dense. You do have to mix it with a bit of thinners and you have to use KBS thinners, you can't just use normal thinners. Once again, marketing, not too sure, um, but with paints and things, you don't want to stuff around, so you just, just get the thinners that they recommend. I don't really want to, uh, to, to set up a spray booth and do all that kind of stuff, so I'm gonna paint this on with a brush and I'm gonna test case the two. It's a self-leveling paint and the finish is, is pretty awesome, you know, you can get almost a similar uh, finish to a spray gun. I'm gonna get cracking into it, and first I'm gonna do the chamber, um, and then if I have enough time, I'll start the underneath. So it's the next morning, I've uh, painted the rust seal on and let it sit overnight. Um, I could probably just leave it like that. As you can see, the, uh, the brush finish is, uh, is an amazing finish, literally like it's been, you know, sprayed on roughly. Um, there's a few drill marks and things like that, but you know, it's underneath, underneath of the car, so who cares? Um, but rust seal, um, you know, I only had three quarters of a, of a can, so I wasn't really, I did thin it out quite a bit. It gets quite thick when you're brushing it and dries. It starts curing as you're brushing it. So over the course of, you know, <clears throat> an hour, the, the brush will start to clog up. So I just thinned it out a bit. As a result, the coverage isn't as good as it should be. So I'm going to, um, I've got a can of this lying around anyway, the black top. And uh, as I mentioned, that's a UV stable um, top coat that you can put on the top of the rust seal if it's going to be exposed to UV light. Now, obviously this isn't going to be exposed to UV light, <clears throat> but um, I just want to put it on there anyway because it's going to be bashed around a little bit, rocks and things like that. And currently I don't think that rust seal is thick enough. So now that this, the actual rust is sealed in, um, they don't recommend to apply this to bare metal. So it, it isn't the same product. It, you know, it is slightly different for some reason. I don't know the, the differences, but uh, it's fine to place on top of rust seal within 24 hours of um, putting the rust seal on without sanding. So I'm right to spray this on. I'm gonna shoot it with the gun just to give it a, a nicer uh, finish. And this is slightly more matte finish than the rust seal. The rust seal doesn't come in a, um, a variety of colors. I think it's just a one the one sort of finish, which is that sort of satiny semi-gloss. Thin this out, if I, I reckon about 10% thinners, it does say 10% thinners, but I would almost go a little bit more if you can and use the KBS thinners. I did uh, end up using, ran out of KBS thinners and I just ended up using this, um, which is, you know, helps a bit of a thinner, you can notice the difference. So, you know, as long as it's a pure thinner, you should be right. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, 
Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, sprayed it on, sprayed the top coat on, went on beautifully. The finish is uh, is exactly what I wanted. It's more of a matte finish, and uh, next time I will be doing it with this spray gun. Heaps easier, um, heaps quicker. I think um, initially I wanted to try and get in there with the brush of the rust seal, just you know, to get a bit more liberal with the paint and just get it right into all those nooks and crannies, which I sometimes think the spray gun doesn't do. But um, look, if you've got a pretty good surface anyway and you don't have much rust, I would suggest just using the spray gun um, heaps faster and more efficient with the, the, um, the amount of paint you use as well. So but as you can see, um, the back, the, uh, the base is all black. Um, and there it is. So yeah, it's really nice, really nice finish. Uh, it looks factory. So I thoroughly recommend uh, using KBS and I've been harping on about it, but um, yeah, like look at that, you know. I didn't, I didn't panel beat everything, but um, looks like it's just rolled out of the factory. So I am extremely happy with that. And based on that, that's done. So it's time to flip it over and uh, start worrying about the top. So you can see I've, uh, I've fit the cow panel in place. Um, I'm happy with the doors, the door gaps either side, but I have decided I'm not gonna weld it in. There's no benefit in welding it in now, um, other than the fact that you can get to the front of the, of the uh, vehicle without you know, the chassis and things being in the way. But um, I don't think it's worth welding it on just for the sake of welding it on. So what I'm gonna do, decide I'm gonna screw it in place to where I'm, I'm happy with it, do a few final measurements and things like that. Screw it in place and it'll stay there until um, all the body work's done. Also, when I'm doing body filler and primer and sanding, you know, you're going to get sand inside here, um, you know, dust and things like that. So I'm sure I'll cover it up, but it'll be nice to actually give it a final clean once you're done and, uh, and then weld it on. So as far as I'm concerned, that is, that is the, uh, the cow done um, and that is how I did it. Um, and obviously you still got to do the final process, but essentially it's done. So it fits um, really beautifully. Um, I thoroughly recommend getting that panel. Also, I just wanted to uh, do a bit of a shout out for uh, a show and shine that's coming up um, in September. I think um, I'll put the details in. It's for the, uh, the local um, car club. I'm gonna be uh, putting the Shipbox Rally car down uh, on a trailer, so if anyone is in the area and wanted to bring their utes down or any, any of their classic cars, it'd be good to uh, support the local area. Um, and uh, yeah, fill out an application form if you actually want to show it, otherwise just turn up and um, have a look around, have a good drive through the area. It's always a, a beautiful drive out this way. So um, yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, obviously, if you uh, enjoy the series, subscribe, it always helps out. And um, yeah, look forward to uh, doing another episode uh, shorter than the last one. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.